Today on Doodle Bud, we have this gorgeous pen courtesy of Gold Spot Pens, the Laban 300, also known as the Skeleton Pen. Just take a look at that beauty. We're going to go through it, show you some features, the parts, the likes, the dislikes. We're going to write with it and all that good stuff. But I figure with a pen like this, let's just get straight into the glam shots. So the pen arrived to me, like I said, from Gold Spot Pens, along with a couple cool little ink samples they threw in. I won't be using these today, but this one especially I will be needing for a special little test, which may involve these things. Anyways, we'll come back to that another time. Nice little box, very simple. So this is, a lot of times they just call it the skeleton, but I guess the model number is the 300. This one is in gun metal, as you saw, and comes with a medium nib. So your standard little box there but underneath a very nice looking box so i like the uh just the overall looks of it the orange goes quite nice with it looks like they got some nibs there as part of the pattern and like i said on my uh, sneak peek this really looks like the beer brand here in canada even that looks like wheat for labat beer it really reminded me of that comes in this nice little box um, yeah, really nice. I just like the looks of it. It's quite, quite nice. I'm not a big box, pen box person, but uh, there you go. Comes with this nice little bookmark uh, for your pages, whether it's in your journal or something that you're reading. And then it also has the warranty and instructions. Three-year warranty on the pen. Let's put that away and get into this thing itself, the beautiful little pen here. So this is, like I said, they call it the skeleton. It comes in th uh, four finishes, I believe. So you can get a chrome, a rose gold. This is the gun metal, and there's also a rainbow version as well. They're all the same materials, just different finishes. So you saw in the close-ups there, we have the Laban. I don't know if it's Laban or Laban. I, I, I don't know. But we got the logo there, the brand name on the cap band, as you can see. Uh, no other like markings as far as logos anywhere else in the pen, just smooth all around. They want to, I guess, give attention to this cool skeleton that's on the outside. It reminds me of something from some type of alien style movie where they find cocoons of foreign aliens that are in there and onto the nib you can see it has the logo in there as well quite nice and this is stamped into the nib versus sometimes they can be like laser engraved and all that stuff as well so that's a nice little finish that's on there grip section has a nice little swoop to a little concave to it in the middle it is a metal grip section but I don't have any problems with that slipping. My hands are a bit dirty. I was playing with some inks and I got dirty, of course. We continue on. As you can see, it's a cartridge converter pen. Comes out pretty easy. Uh, threads are all really nice on here as well. Nice converter. This is the same style of converter that I see on the Gravitas pen. So it's just a very nice, smooth one. I really like this converter. Uh, the action on it is quite nice. Has Le Bon branding on there as well. Um, and then the main body, the plastic that you see that is an acrylic. I have seen some where the acrylic is like a frosted versus a crystal clear one like this. But anyways, I could be mistaken on that one as well. But I thought I have seen some where it's a little more frosted versus clear, but this one's got the clear. That's A-OK. -okay. And uh, the cap goes on. It's uh, two and a half rotations in total to secure the cap fully. And away you go. I haven't had any challenges with this thing drying out, hard starting, no functionality problems with the pen whatsoever. It has worked right out of the box every single time which is quite nice as well. You can see the clip on here as well. Uh, it's a fairly stiff clip. I'm, I don't use clips in shirt pockets, um, but this one definitely, it's got some stiffness to it as well. I don't know if you like a stiff clip or a loose one, but this is a bit on the stiffer side, I would say. And as you can see, the main part is that exoskeleton. So that is brass. So it's quite thin too. So this is what's really interesting. I thought this was gonna be a pretty, pretty heavy pen 
Uh, I have another pen that has a sort of a look to this as well, and it's quite heavy. This one is actually surprisingly light. We're going to get it on the scale. I'll give you the exact details on it. So it makes it quite comfortable. It is large enough uh, to use unposted for my hand. I kind of like it when I do post it. So my hands, I have a quite a large hand. I could see for uh, the majority of people, unposted is completely fine. It's quite a light pen at that case and quite comfortable as well. But it does post on here nice and secure. It's not coming off. You can feel it get on there. And uh, it, I mean, the cap is fairly light. So I wouldn't really say it back weights it too much, depending how you write. If you are someone who's pretty vertical, you might not like that. But for me, it just kind of sinks in there and it's very, very comfortable when writing with the pen posted as well. I mentioned the nib has the branding on there, which is great. And this is a Bach style nib. Uh, nib sizes. I noticed there's a little variability when I was on the Gold Spot site. Some it could just be to to inventory, but when I looked on the Le Bon site, it was from extra fine all the way up to broad. But check the description down below. I'll have a link directly to the Gold Spot site for you to check out as well. So I've been using the pen for a week, been very happy with it overall, haven't had really any issues. I will go over my likes and dislikes, little things I do notice on the pen as well. But let's do some weights and measurements, size comparisons, writing samples, and we'll chat a little more. This is the pen with the converter and inked up. Total weight on that, 36 and change. And just the pen itself, we're looking at about 19.6. So very lightweight, deceiving. I thought this was gonna be quite heavy. In quick dimensions of the pen. This body here around this part's about 13.3. The thickest part around the cap band is about 16.3. Overall length of the pen, about 131. Pop off the cap, you're left with about 126. Post it, depending on how deep you go, of course. It'd probably change a little bit from pen to pen but you got about 160 millimeters like so. The grip section, sort of the narrowest here where you're not, uh, your fingers will just sort of naturally go to, just a little bit over 10 millimeters on my pen. You can see here we have the threads, slight little step up, but you don't really, it doesn't bother you. If you are a high gripper, um, there's no real issue with the threads. They are smooth, they're not sharp, it is on the acrylic part there as well. You can see a nice little thread profile. So not sharp whatsoever or uncomfortable. And you can see a little step here onto that skeleton portion that fits onto the body. None of this stuff is, is sharp or uncomfortable or unpleasant. If you are gripping down low, back further up or right in the middle, it's quite comfortable. So one pen I find the Le bon is very close to in size is a Pilot Metropolitan. Of course, it's a little bit thicker, but lengthwise it's very similar. And also a Sharpie. If you don't have a Pilot Metropolitan kicking around, very, very similar size to a Sharpie. Again, just a little bit thicker. But let's get that out of here. Non-fountain pen. Here is a Lamy LX. So you can see for a little size comparison, let me pop the caps off caps off and you can see what I mean with the whole Sharpie deal very close to it as well and the Metropolitan the Lamy is a bit longer and now finally with the pens posted so let's get to writing with the pen and then I will have a little bit of a discussion as far as likes and dislikes so we got the Le bon 300 also known as the skeleton the nib I have on here is a medium and the ink that I'm using today is Monteverde. It's Smoke Noir. This is super smooth. It's also very wet. So let me show you that. So the ink really comes out of here with no flow issues whatsoever. Nice and juicy. So if you like a nice wet pen, wet nib, uh, you know, I, I can't speak for every single nib that comes out from a pen maker, but this one is quite nice if this is a representation of other nibs to find. As far as reverse goes, it's actually pretty usable as well. You can even get a mango chutney going. No skips. I mean, it's a little bit toothy, but definitely this writes like a fine pointed uh, nib in reverse and no problems and the wetness is still pretty decent as well so again pretty good for a reverse writing pen again nib to nib that can vary and I have to say I'm not one to try to go and match inks but I thought this smoke noir is kind of close to this gunmetal and I have to say not too shabby
So you got to see what it looks like, how big it is, how much it weighs, how it writes. Let's get into some of the kind of those smaller and finer details. So the pen, when you cap it, when you put it on, you can see that little line there. So that's just a little ridge, a little step that's machined into the cap when they do it that way. It presses against the end of the section here, sort of on the collar. And so that's gonna go up tight onto there and it's gonna secure it so you don't strip these threads out, but also to help with sealing. And I think that's probably a good reason why this pin hasn't hard started on me. Well, a little thing that might drive some people nuts. So when you put the nib in, I tried every orientation possible. You can't get the nib to line up with the clip. It doesn't bother me, but I know for some people, uh, it'll make your uh, hair stand on the back of your neck. So keep that in mind. It steps down here onto the body but nothing's grabbing or pinching or colliding with each other. So I'm happy with that and that the gap isn't too big. Um, the gunmetal, and it, it's probably going to happen on the shiny slick ones too, but you can see you can get some fingerprints on there. So if you're a super OCD person, that might drive you nuts. Uh, it doesn't, again, bother me. I, I, it's fine. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to use things. Your fingerprints are going to get on them. Uh, I will let you know the first pen I got did have a little bit of an issue. And it had to do with um, the alignment with this back finial to the main skeleton body here. I got a few pictures to show you. I let Goldspot know about that. And instantly they issued me an RMA and said, send it back. You know, they stand behind their products, even if they're shooting me a pen for review. I, you know, I didn't want to cause any troubles, but just thought, hey, you know, you don't want to show a bad pen, but at the same time, I don't want to hide the fact. So I took a few pictures to show you if you order one, feel free, you know, return that. Or if you're from a ways away and you worry that could happen, you can always shoot them an email and be like, hey, I've heard that can happen. Could you maybe just check on my pen before you send it? And I'm, uh, you know, they'll probably will do that for you as well. Uh, so, but that's something at Le Bon. Maybe uh, they should look into that assembly process of the parts, the fitment, just to ensure that doesn't happen. Um, I like the branding on the cartridge converter, sorry, on the converter, I should say. It takes cartridges as well, so that's handy. But I do know what you're thinking. You have this beautiful uh, looking pen. What if there was just no cartridge and maybe if it was a piston filler instead or a vac filler, I think vac filler actually would be kind of cool with this pen or maybe even eyedropper. I wouldn't recommend going for an eyedropper. Um, you might be able, you got acrylic onto these. You might be able to get away with that with some uh, silicone, but you do, as you can see on the bottom, you have that metal piece, that brass piece down there as well. So I just wouldn't mess with that. I'm not a big eyedropper person as it is. But I, I wouldn't really recommend going for that as well. But they do have a nice job on these threads. I don't see this stuff wearing. Um, this sits down on this part here as a thread stop, which is nice. They got rid of the first couple of threads, so the threads aren't going to get pulled out and, and worn out over time. You know, same type of principles up here as well. Everything's really good. I haven't had any kind of issues with that. Another little thing I observed with the skeleton here on the body is... These cutouts here, they, they removed a lot of material. On some other pens that I have, I have another pen where it has a similar type of overall style. There's, you know, this exoskeleton isn't new. This has been around for a while. But usually the cutouts are smaller, so there's a lot more material. With this one, it's the other way around. Hence, the pen is so light. And I don't have any issues anywhere else. But there's one little one here in the back somewhere. Uh, there it is, this one here where it's just not as snug. You can see a little bit of daylight underneath there. So it does stick up a little bit. The other ones here are all super tight to the body, pretty good. I don't have any issues, but just with that one in the back, you can feel the edge a little bit. It's not gonna cut you. It's not like in a position that really bothers you so much, but uh, you know, you can if you go around, you can feel it a little bit on there as well. So I just thought I would point that out. That's sort of the trade-off that you get when you're gonna remove a lot more material 
and this is quite thin as well you can have a little bit of a distortion in the overall um, you know kind of keeping that structural integrity of the whole design it, you can get a little bit of deformation on there as well even if I wanted to I could probably just squish it a little bit and get it super tight but just thought I would point that out I didn't have that anywhere here on the cap this this feels super super tight it was just one of them that's just off just a little bit more than the others it comes the price point of the pen if you go directly onto the Lebon site for this particular model, the Rainbow one's a touch more, uh, but this one they're quoting 280 on Gold Spot. This same pen is 223, so a significant um, price discount uh, coming from them as a retailer. There's also they have the same pens, same colors in Rollerball. So if you're not a fountain pen person or you want to do matchy matchy, you can get the uh, the Rollerball for that as well, and that's I think right around 200. The overall build quality is quite good. The performance is good. I'm happy with the pen. I haven't had any issues. It writes. It's smooth. It's wet. The reverse is good. This you're either going to like this look or you're not, but as far as how the pen performs, it's it's quite good. So, yeah, very interesting pen. Uh, this definitely caught a few eyes. I was at a Starbucks the other day and I pulled this thing out, started writing, and the person next to me was like, Whoa, what is that? <laughs> I can only imagine if I had this in the rainbow color. We'll just leave it there for now. Big thank you to Gold Spot Pens for sending me this beauty to review. Again, check the link there in the description. So you can check it out for yourself as well. If you've been eyeing one of these, hopefully this has helped you out or if this is the new one to you. Now you know there's some new cool pens that are out there. Also, if you have one of these and been using it for a while, we'd love to hear from you. Leave it down in the comments for people to read. Let them know how it's been going. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer what I can. Appreciate everyone who's been following the channel, having fun along with me here, checking out my videos and hitting subscribe. It helps me big time. And uh, we will leave it there for now. We will catch you next time.